for joining us. I'm John Oliver. Just time for a quick recap of the week. And we begin here in New York with Pride, uh, the day that makes every colour that's not on the rainbow flag feel like a worthless sack of shit. <laughs> now, this year, there was even more to celebrate than usual. Back to the big news of the day, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling 5-4 to four to legalize same-sex marriage in the entire country. That obviously includes the 14 states where it was against the law. Yes! <laughs> finally! Finally! All across America, anyone can get married. Anyone except, of course, for guys who own snakes. <laughs> they still can't, but that's on them. That's an actual lifestyle choice, Gary. <laughs> and, and look, we, we don't have time to get into all the responses. Basically, if you thought someone would be happy or angry at the decision, they probably were. But the award for greatest moment in global pride celebrations actually had nothing to do with gay marriage and everything to do with the idiocy of CNN. Because <laughs> if, if you were watching them yesterday, you may have seen this. And this just in to CNN, an unnerving sight today at a London gay pride celebration, an ISIS flag <laughs> among a sea of rainbow colours. I seem to be the only person who has spotted this. Hmm. Um, and nobody seems to be raising any questions or pointing it out. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tell you why they weren't raising any questions. That's not the ISIS flag. That's a flag with dildos and butt plugs all over it. <laughs> and yet... And yet... For more than seven spectacular minutes, CNN had it on screen, <laughs> even calling one of their terrorism experts to try to figure out why ISIS might be marching with the gay community through <laughs> London. Which did seem surprising. Now, it turns out it's a full day later now, and they've still not addressed that mistake on air. <laughs> Probably because it would be just too embarrassing to have a professional journalist say, I'm sorry, despite working at CNN, it seems I don't know what a dildo looks like. <laughs> I don't know. So let's, let's move on. Let's move on to the Supreme Court. Uh, America's nine most fascinating legal scholars or nine most boring wizards. Uh, <laughs> marriage equality wasn't actually their only major ruling this week. Today, in a landmark 6-3 to three decision, the Supreme Court voted to uphold nationwide subsidies to help poor and middle-class Americans purchase health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. It's amazing. Somehow, somehow, against all the odds, Obamacare is still alive. It's the, it's the legislative equivalent of Keith Richards. It, it really could have died in so many ways by now, but I'm definitely glad it's still around. There, there was genuine concern that this case could have dismantled Obamacare completely, and if it had, it would have been for the dumbest possible reason. The challenge was based on these four words, quote, established by the state. Opponents said the phrase made federal subsidies uh, illegal in certain states. Yes, established by the state could have been the four most damaging words since Godzilla just joined ISIS, <laughs> or piranhas now have legs, or moms on Facebook now. <laughs> luckily, luckily the Supreme Court realised that in context, the state meant the government and not one of the 50 states. But Chief Justice Roberts did point out that the law could have been clearer. Roberts acknowledged the law contains more than a few examples of inartful drafting, but he said the opponent's approach would lead to a calamitous result. And that's true. Inartful drafting put 6.4 million people's health coverage at risk, which is insane, because language is inartfully drafted all the time. For example, let me show you an actual banner supporting England's Women's World Cup team this year. Come on, our girls. <laughs> that sentence... <laughs> really could have used a comma. Just throw a comma in there. But, but, like the Supreme Court, you fundamentally understand the intention behind it. <laughs> Nobody's arguing that we should literally do what it says. <laughs> now, this landmark decision inevitably drew a dissent from Antonin Scalia, a, a pizzeria chef statue that came to life <laughs> but never acquired human emotions or empathy. And Scalia was emphatic in his response to Roberts. His opinion sparked a blistering dissent by Justice Antonin Scalia, who took the unusual step of summarizing it from the bench, calling the court's reasoning absurd, interpretive jiggery-pokery, and pure applesauce. I'm sorry. Jiggery-pokery? 
pure applesauce. Are you a justice or a Victorian dowager writing an angry letter to Prim and Proper Ladies Monthly magazine? <laughs> listen, listen, Scalia, let me answer you in terms that I think you'll understand. Because, yes, the court's ruling was a bit frippity-frappity, but... <laughs> but I say this, if it takes a touch of goofery and baba ganoush to help people... <laughs> to help keep the people of this great nation healthy, well then, by hiblet or by giblet, bring on the hoople and zizzle-zazzle, because that's the kind of country I want to live in. I said good day, sir. <laughs> Blueberries. Blueberries and custard, sir. Blueberries and custard. <laughs> and lastly, lastly this week, Ukraine, currently Russia's fastest-growing import. <laughs> you, you may remember ex-Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych fled the country last year after a popular uprising. He was accused of embezzlement and corruption, perhaps best symbolised by his lavish wooden house, which I think we can all agree is what termites think about when they masturbate. <laughs> it, this thing contained excesses both small and large, from a golden loaf of bread to this private zoo featuring ostriches. Well, this week, Yanukovych re-emerged for an interview to explain the existence of his private ostrich zoo. That I supported the ostriches? What's wrong with that? You supported the ostriches? Yes, they just live there. What? <laughs> what do you mean, they just live there? Ostriches are not native to Ukraine. They can't have just been there. They're ostriches, not Kate Bosworth. <laughs> what, where did she come from? Was she in something at some point? Was she in anything at any point? <laughs> I, I think she might have always been here. <laughs> and and to, to that reporter's credit, he did not let that answer slide. <laughs> Excuse me, but it's a little hard to believe that the president of the country lives in a place where there just happen to be ostriches wandering around. Uh, no, they weren't just wandering around. It was a totally separate territory. No, it was one territory. I went there myself. OK, it was one territory, but I have 1.7 hectares attached to my home. I did not have time to be there. I was working, even though I do love animals. OK, no. No. Because even if you love animals, no one loves ostriches. No one even likes them. Look at this thing. It looks like a shaved ballerina wearing a merkin. It, lo it looks like a cat toy fucked a giraffe. And look, no offence, ostriches, but this is not the face of an animal. It's a very old cactus that happens to have a vagina. That's a fact. That's an animal fact. Now, interestingly, since Yanukovych abandoned the property, it's open to visitors, which has brought some problems of its own for a male ostrich named Igoriok, as this Ukrainian TV report shows. The zoo technician says the visitors annoy the ostrich Igoriok very much, and even his fertility has fallen because of them. He could possibly manage to breathe, but it seems he is too stressed and can't do it. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, because Yanukovych did not socialise his bird monsters properly, they're now too nervous to fuck in public, which, <laughs> frankly, is yet another tragedy for the people of Ukraine. Because we researched it, and ostrich sex is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Look at this. First, the male ostrich sits on the female like she's a futon, then flaps around arrhythmically, <laughs> waving from side to side, while the poor female, who frankly could not be less into this, <laughs> just sits there and waits until he's done, at which point the male ostrich triumphantly flounces off to go and tell his friends all about it. <laughs> and... What better metaphor could there possibly be for Yanukovych and Ukraine? He just plopped down, had his way with the country, and then flounced off, leaving it wondering what the fuck just happened. <laughs> and now, this. And now, a few more seconds of hot ostrich sex. <laughs> Moving on, moving on. This, this has clearly been a big week for the LGBT community, but it's also been a big year for the T part of that equation, from Caitlyn Jenner's Vanity Fair cover uh, to TV shows like Transparent uh, to another small milestone just this Friday. Actress Laverne Cox marked another milestone with the drop of a curtain at Madame Tussauds, San Francisco. Now, that is a big step forward for transgender Americans, and it's frankly about time. 
Because bear in mind, it came after the same milestone for Spider-Americans and Wookiees. <laughs> but, but for all the strides transgender people have made lately, let's not get too complacent about how far we've come, because they still face a host of obstacles. Even when the news media are trying to be supportive, they can make dumb mistakes. Your private parts are different now, aren't they? I don't want to talk about it because it's, it's, still, it's really personal. Don't you feel funny with the wrong genitalia? When Not as a joke, you stand up in the women's bathroom. You've got breast implants. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, they're tasteful, whatever, whatever's going on there. Thank you. So if I saw you undressed, you would look like a woman to me totally, yes? <laughs> what are you doing? It is no more okay to ask transgender people about their sex organs than it would be to ask Jimmy Carter whether or not he's circumcised. <laughs> Which, by the way, he is. <laughs> Smooth like a boiled carrot. <laughs> and, and sometimes... Som don't think about that. And sometimes... <laughs> the media's confusion is even more basic than that, as in the case of this Arizona weatherman just two weeks ago. And a transgender woman says she was kicked out of a Tempe bar. <laughs> Let's bring it back to that earlier headline. Now, what is a transgender woman? Yes. What does that even mean now? Okay. <laughs> Do you like it? I thought it means <laughs> she used to be a guy. But now it's a woman. <laughs> this okay. Is, this is... <laughs> so weird. Are you just saying a woman? That, I, I, don't, I can't even keep up anymore. Holy shit! I, I really hope that's also how he reports the weather. Wait, wait, it used to be rainy and now it's sunny? So, so, so now it's just sunny? Now I can't even keep up anymore! I can't... This doesn't make my head work! Look, 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 let's... Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe for him and for many people, this is new information. Maybe he's thinking about transgender issues for the first time and he needs a minute to try and understand it. So let's take that minute to fill in that bamboozled weatherman <laughs> and everyone else on some basic details. Transgender people have a gender identity that differs from the one they were assigned at birth. And that gender identity is not the same as sexual orientation. Gender identity is who you are, Sexual orientation is who you love. Some transgender people do undergo hormone therapy or sex reassignment surgery as part of their transition. Some do not. And interestingly, their decision on this matter is, medically speaking, none of your fucking business. <laughs> and if you're, if you're still wondering... Well, hold on, hold on. What, what, what do I call a transgender person? It's so confusing. Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Call them whatever they want to be called. You can do it. We do it all the time. Think of it this way. David Evans woke up one day and said, everyone call me the edge. <laughs> and, and we all went, find the edge? Are we talking the noun or the verb? And, and that's... It's not just that. It's not just that. Over the past 20 years, we've agreed to call this man Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, <laughs> Just Diddy, and now Puff Daddy again, and most people don't even like him. And, <laughs> and here's the thing. Here's the important thing. It's genuinely crucial that we get this right, because there are more transgender people in the US than you might realise. One study estimates that nearly 700,000 American adults are transgender. That's more than the population of Boston. And you probably know someone from Boston. I'll, I'll give you a clue. It was the guy who wore a Bruins jersey to your sister's wedding. <laughs> and... And while... While a handful of transgender people have been winning awards or appearing on magazine covers, the community at large has been facing some staggering challenges. A 2011 survey by the National Center for Transgender Equality found 41% of transgender people had attempted suicide. They are nearly uh, four times more likely to make less than, than $10,000 a year compared to the general population. 78% of those surveyed reported harassment during K-12 schooling, 35% reported physical assault, and 12% were sexually assaulted. That is terrible. Those statistics are so depressing, it's enough to make you angry at the very concept of numbers. Fuck you, symbols meant to represent a specific value. You're the absolute worst. The worst. Look, look, we've, we've clearly got work to do. Because when you're transgender, pretty much any interaction with bureaucracy can be humiliatingly difficult. Just take what happened to two transgender women when they went to the DMV in West Virginia. 
Both women were asked to remove all their jewelry, makeup, and wigs before the DMV would photograph them. They're saying that I need to fulfill a certain, a certain look that they are designating means male and that I'm, you know, hiding who I am, which I'm absolutely not. Both women say they were also referred to as it. Words can't explain the humiliation I felt that day. That was the worst thing in 52 years of my life that I have ever felt. Listen. I'm not saying anyone has a good DMV experience, but that is the worst I have ever heard. And for the record, you get to pick virtually everything else on your driver's license. They ask you your weight. They don't weigh you like a prize hog. <laughs> Plus, the whole idea of a driver's license photo is to present how you look from day to day. That's why DMV employees tell you not to smile, because they can't imagine anyone whose normal existence involves happiness in any form. And even in, even in organisations that have seemed willing to change, that change has come frustratingly slowly. Take the military. Both the Secretary of Defence and President Obama have indicated they are open to transgender troops being able to serve. And yet, they're still banned from enlisting because of weirdly archaic restrictions on things like uh, defects of the genitalia, such as change of sex and psychosexual conditions, including but not limited to transsexualism and transvestism. Our current recruitment poster is essentially, I want you, maybe, after we talk about your genitals for a bit, I know that's weird, but for the moment, this is apparently how we do things. <laughs> and yet, even despite those restrictions on enlistment, by one estimate, there are currently 15,000 transgender service members. And while you can be discharged for being transgender, those rules are enforced inconsistently depending on your branch of service and commanding officer, meaning experiences can vary wildly. For, for some, like Logan Ireland, it can be great. What I like about this deployment is I can be my authentic self. I'm just another guy, whereas back home, I'm still seen as female and I go by female regs and standards. Here in Afghanistan, a war zone, it's like a vacation to me because I can be myself in such an austere environment. It is not a great sign mm. for how we treat transgender people that Afghanistan is a place where you can be yourself. <laughs> that is the least likely tourism slogan for Afghanistan. <laughs> but I'd, I'd put it right behind water park capital of the world <laughs> and birthplace of the twerk. But, but compare that with the experience of Captain Jacob Eleazar of the Army National Guard, who faced discharge for being transgender despite his own commander's support and the fact he was being awarded a medal. The thing that stuck with me the most is as they were pinning that, that Army Commendation medal on I me, mean, my regimental commander said, thank you for everything that you've done for our regiment, Jacob. And, and use, use my real name. Um, and and I, 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 can't, I can't express uh, just the emotion of that juxtaposition. It's like you're, you're kicking me out, um, but you're acknowledging me for myself and giving me an award at the same time. That's utterly ridiculous. They gave him an award and then tried to kick him out. It's pretty much what Hollywood did to Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> and that wasn't OK either. But, but this is the big problem. This is the big problem, because even when people say the right things about the transgender community, too often, practical change fails to follow. And perhaps the perfect embodiment of this concerns bathrooms. We all use them. As the good book tells us, everyone poops. <laughs> or, as it's known in England, everyone poops but the Queen. <laughs> she has people do it for her. Ac across the country, there have been efforts by lawmakers to fight non-discrimination ordinances with so-called bathroom bills, like this one in Arizona. It's a new show-me-your-papers bill for Arizona. The sex on your birth certificate would have to match the sex of the bathroom or locker room that you use. The target, transgender men and women here in Arizona. Six months in jail, $2,500 fine for just going into pee. $2,500 fine for peeing in the wrong place. Look, unless you happen to urinate a 1989 Chateau Petru, <laughs> you're not even going to break even on that deal. In, in the most recent session, at least 13 bathroom bills have been introduced in state legislatures, and the reasoning behind them can be pretty insulting. Just listen to presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. We are now in 
city after city watching ordinances that say that your seven-year-old daughter, if she goes into the restroom, cannot be offended, and you can't be offended if she's greeted there by a 42-year-old man who feels more like a woman than he does a man. Now, I wish someone had told me when I was in high school that I could have felt like a woman when it came time to take showers and P.E. I'm pretty sure I would have found my feminine side and said, Coach, I think I'd rather shower with the girls today. <laughs> You're laughing because it sounds so ridiculous, doesn't it? There's something inherently wrong with forcing little children to, to be a part of this social experiment. No, but uh, there is something inherently wrong with forcing us to listen to your fucked up daydreams about all the sex crimes you would have committed as a teenager had you just been able to find a legal loophole. That's weird. And, and that, that kind of baseless fear-mongering is everywhere. It even turned up in a campaign ad when Gainesville, Florida was trying to pass one of these bills. Okay, let's, let's break that bullshit down, because, first, assaulting children is still illegal. <laughs> Secondly, someone abusing a non-discrimination ordinance to assault someone in a bathroom is almost unheard of. It's a borderline imaginary crime, like dragon rustling or space bestiality. <laughs> sure, it's terrible, but it doesn't really happen. <laughs> also, forcing transgender people into certain bathrooms can actually be much more disruptive as activist Michael Hughes, a transgender man, showed with this photo of himself looking understandably awkward in a ladies' room. Because there are many places that Michael would fit in. Um, a tattoo parlour in Reno, uh, playing steel guitar in a Johnny Cash tribute band, <laughs> or on the label of his own barbecue sauce. <laughs> but a women's bathroom? Yeah, not so much. Besides, it is so much easier for everyone when people are allowed to use the bathroom that matches their gender identity rather than one that might match the genitalia they were born with. That is why the little pictures on bathroom doors are stereotypical representations of men and women and not biologically accurate depictions of penises and vaginas <laughs> because that would be troubling for children. Uh, mummy, mummy. Do I go with the one with the pouty slug or the angry goat skull? <laughs> I'm scared. And yet, legislators have even tried to enforce these bills in high schools with damaging consequences. Take the case of Henry Brousseau, a transgender high school student who spoke in opposition to a proposed bathroom bill in Kentucky. Even though I've been living as a male for some time I've been ex and been accepted by my friends and family as a male, I was being forced to use a girl's bathroom at my school until very recently. Because the school administration did not support my gender identity by letting me use the restrooms concordant with my gender identity, the kids at my school bullied me. The kids thought that because the administration didn't support my gender identity, they didn't have to either. And that is the whole point. Official rules can end up legitimizing prejudice. And besides, teenagers really don't need extra ideas for how to make each other's lives miserable. <laughs> That's what they do. Uh, Sit on your own, Becca. Side ponytails are so five nevers ago. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and look, as Henry finished his speech, it actually seemed like he'd really connected with the legislators. If you don't know a transgender kid already, you do know you do now. You know me, Henry. Please let me know how I can be of any further assistance and thank you so much for your time today and please vote no on Senate Bill 76. I educated myself a lot today, and I appreciate the testimony. Uh, you should be proud of pr proud of yourself for being able to stand in front of this committee and be so articulate in your comments. Henry, I love you, man. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your courage. I can't really imagine that anyone else in this room has the kind of courage that it took for you to come and testify today. Okay, okay, but I love you, man. <laughs> It's a little much. I love Henry too, but he's not the best man at your wedding. He's a teenage boy trying to take a shit in the men's room. <laughs> and, and it's worth noting, once they were done patting Henry on the back and then patting themselves for patting Henry, all three of those lawmakers 
voted to advance the bill to force him into bathrooms where he's bullied. <laughs> now, thankfully, that, that particular bill never became law. But that dynamic of praising a transgender person's courage and then <laughs> not actually supporting them speaks to the fact that we are weirdly comfortable celebrating transgender people while simultaneously dehumanising them at the DMV, pinning awards to them as we drum them out of the military and constantly quizzing them about their genitals. And look, this is a civil rights issue. And if you are not willing to support transgender people for their sake, at least do it for your own. Because we've been through this before. We know how this thing ends. If you take the anti-civil rights side and deny people access to something they're entitled to, history is not going to be kind to you. There is no biopic where Liam Neeson kicks the shit out of a suffragist. <laughs> this, this, there's not a stamp featuring George Wallace at the schoolhouse door. And you are not going to get a monument that says at the base of it, he told people where to shit. <laughs> and now, this. And now, this is not CNBC's first rodeo. You've done this for a while, right? Not your first Disney on Ice rodeo. It's not his first rodeo. A company that is, for whom this is not their first rodeo. And this is not your first rodeo. Not our first rodeo. Good this night. isn't your first rodeo. This isn't your first rodeo. I was reading your, your resume here. This is not your first rodeo. I'm gonna use the not the first rodeo thing. This is not Peltz's first rodeo. It wasn't his first rodeo. Not Howard Schultz's first ro rodeo. Not my first right. radio. Right. Rodeo. You ever been to a rodeo? I, I'm cool. gonna say that I have because I use the expression that this isn't my first, first rodeo. rodeo. <laughs> and finally tonight, we look at time. Time. It's the actual thing that separates men from the boys. And uh, this week, this week, there is going to be an unusual timekeeping event. A leap second is coming every few years. An extra second is added to account for a mismatch between clocks and the Earth's rotation. That's right. This Tuesday night, there is going to be a leap second. Just before midnight, coordinated universal time, the clock will go from 11.59.59 to 11.59.60, which sounds less like an actual time and more like how a pufferfish describes his ideal woman. Oh, she's a perfect 11.59.60. <laughs> Real narrow, round, and then even rounder. <laughs> and look, I, I know an extra second does not seem like that big a deal, but you can get a lot done in a second. You can spoil the twist endings of classic movies. I'll show you. Um, dude's dead. Uh, Soze is spacey. Uh, kitchen remodel still in progress, but very much on track. <laughs> the, point, the point is... The point is, we want you to enjoy your extra second on Tuesday. So we have purchased spendyourleapsecondhere.com and uploaded some of the greatest one-second videos you could possibly imagine. Uh, let me give you a quick taste. Uh, here is an upside-down sloth making a weird sound. Ah! <laughs> That's a great second. You just spent that second very well. I'll give you another. Uh, here is Mariah Carey's dog getting into a fight with Mariah Carey's cat during the taping of Mariah Carey's Cribs episode. <laughs> That's... Come on! That's arguably a more important second than the Big Bang was. So, please, on Tuesday, go to spendyourleapsecondhere.com or, indeed, to johnoliversextapes.com, which, yes, we bought before we said it out loud. And you can enjoy such magnificent micro-moments as Bobby Carnavale acting the shit out of the words leap second. Leap second! Bravo! Bravo, Bobby! And, look, if you're thinking, well, hold on, if we all go to that website at the same time on Tuesday, won't it crash? Nah, that seems unlikely. Nothing like that has ever famously happened before. So, <laughs> go to johnoliversextapes.com and waste your extra second with us. That's our show. Uh, we're off next week. We'll be back after that. Thank you so much. Good night! Leap. Second. Leap. Second. Leap. Second.